Namo Buddhaya. This is Sabina when I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing uh, my learnings from the Middle Discourses 37, which is titled The Shorter Discourse on the Ending of Craving. Right? Now, the link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can read that discourse to get your own insights. Uh, in this basically uh, 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 discourse, uh, there is this thing about Buddha was staying in the Savatthi in the Eastern Monastery. And uh, at that time, Sakka, Sakka, uh, uh, Sakka has uh, the interaction between Sakka and Buddha had also come in the uh, uh, Dikha Nikaya, uh, longer discourses. So Sakka, the Lord of Gods, Sakka was a Lord of Gods. And he went up to the Buddha and asked the question, Sir, how you briefly define a mendicant who is freed through the end of craving? So basically Sakka was almost, he, he had attained stream entry, right? So because of his uh, good deeds and everything, he was Lord of Gods and he was, he already had reached stream entry. So he had come to ask the question, how do you define a mendicant who is freed through the ending of craving, who has reached the ultimate goal, the ultimate sanctuary from the yoke, the ultimate spiritual life, the ultimate goal and is the best among gods and humans? Right? So that was the question that was put up to Buddha. Now Buddha replied on that question is, Lord of Gods, take a mendicant who has heard. Nothing is worth, worth insisting on. When a mendicant has heard that nothing is worth insisting on, they directly know all things. Directly knowing all things, they completely understand all things. Completely understanding all things, when they experience any kind of feeling, pleasant, unpleasant or neutral, they meditate observing impermanence, dispassion, cessation and letting go in these feelings. Meditating in this way, they don't grasp at anything in the world. Not grasping, they are not anxious. Not being anxious, they personally become extinguished. They understand, rebirth is ended, the spiritual journey has been completed and what has to be done, has to be done and there is no return to any state of existent, existence. This is how I briefly define a mendicant who is freed through the ending of craving, who has reached the ultimate end, the ultimate sanctuary from the yoke, the ultimate spiritual life, the ultimate goal and is the best among gods and humans. Then Sakka, Lord of Gods, having approved and agreed with what the Buddha said, bowed respectfully and went away. So let us recap because this is the most important para. Nothing is worth insisting on. That means getting free from all the you know narrow uh, kind of insistences on the attachments and you know we have attachments to our ideas and concepts and you know so no not insisting on any particular idea of the truth right even not attaching to the idea of non-self right so some fight that there is a self some fight that there is not a self we let go of all the ideas and our attachments to all the ideas they directly know all things. They completely understanding understand all things. Basically, here the, what Buddha, what my little understanding is that understanding all things as to their nature, right? Nature of impermanence, non-self, and suffering. Right? Understanding all things in this samsara, complete understanding. And when the complete understanding is there, if there is any pleasure, pleasure, any feeling, painful, pleas pleasing, neutral, all the feelings. They just, when they see, get that feeling, they meditate, observing the impermanence, right? Dispassion, cessation, rather than losing themselves in those feelings, they meditate on them. So our, the idea that we can take from it is becoming mindful of our feelings as they arise, not losing ourselves in the feelings, being, staying mindful and just witnessing the feelings, right? This is what we do in the Vipassana meditation, right? Just witnessing the various states come and go without getting attached to any state. Meditating in this way, they don't grasp at anything. And this is our practice. <clears throat> when you follow this practice, we slowly, you know, we kind of stop clinging or, you know, be becoming averse to things. We just take the, you know, we are just in the flow. We become in the flow. Otherwise, there is always this game of, you know, clinging to things or running away from things that happen. We just are just flowing in life. And let the things arise and pass on, pass away from by themselves. We only watch them. We don't attach. And we do not, in one of the discourses, Buddha said that this form is not me. These feelings are not me. 
this choices are not me this mental formations are not me this consciousness are not me so we totally kind of get kind of disillusioned and detached by all these things which are arising and falling right so because we do not have any control of them they are just arising and falling on their own because of some higher law law of karma whatever law right so we just arise let them see them arise and fall don't get attached to him don't desire don't cling don't grasp and this is our practice and because we are not grasping we don't become anxious not become anxious we become extinguished right so because we do not supply further force to this wheel of you know um, uh, the wheel of rebirth and existence right because we do not supply our energy of our desire our clinging our aversion we just let whatever is there it's just passing on we don't provide fresh fresh fuel to it right so this is our practice and uh, this is how buddha said that a person you know becomes free complete become ar- becomes an arihant so we are long way from becoming an arihant but this is of the practice that we can follow right so this kind of this that cue we can get from this particular thing and then what happened in this discourse is that uh, venerable mahamogulana mahamogulana was one of the senior disciples of the buddha who had a lot of psychic power he was he had a very good psychic power so he wanted to check that uh, whether that uh, sakka understood the things in a clear way right so he went so sakka had went back to his kingdom uh, so he through his psychic power he went back and you know sakka ka Uh, was there sitting in the park and mahamoglana said can you please share what uh, buddha said so he said uh, he then started explaining about that you know there was a war and i had won the war and i created a palace and you know there are so many beautiful names and you know and let me show the palace so he was kind of distracting mahamoglana and mahamoglana was like seeing that he has like he's like he's becoming neg- negligent so he kind of uh, used his psychic power and through his big toe he just shook that palace and uh, mahamogulana was totally shocked how surprised how he could shook the palace so he was to try to convey him that all these things are impermanent don't get lost in these things and then mahamogulana came and then uh, sakka explained the 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 buddha's teaching again to him and then mahamogulana came back to the buddha discussed with the buddha that this was what i had understood so so there is a bit of lack of clarity as to why when mahamogulana was there with the uh, buddha when buddha was explaining to sakka about the the how the craving uh, how to find out if the craving has ended why he went back to mahamogulana's place and you know came back from there so that is not very clear in this discourse but the main thing is how to end the craving so the uh, so again the main lesson is be mindful of the feelings don't crave don't insist don't get attached to any particular thing buddha's knowledge is totally of the getting the direct experience it's not about belief in anything no, not even a belief in his teachings so buddha had given his teachings but he always said see it from your own direct experience reflect and would be and believe what you experience directly right and that is i think unparalleled no other master has kind of said it so clearly that you don't even believe in what i say do your necessary inquiries and then decide for yourself so we do our vipassana meditation we do our mindfulness practice during the day we become mindful of the various states that arise we study the sutras uh, and be on the path right so i hope this video was useful in some way uh, do share your thoughts learnings on the this sutra thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya